In this example, I have a multiple column layout with two graphics that need to have text wrap applied. I would like the text to wrap around the graphic that shows the pull quote and around the image that shows the balloons. To do that, we need to use the text wrap panel. You can open the text wrap panel via the window menu. Choose window and then text wrap. There are five settings across the top of the text wrap panel. The first is no text wrap. All frames will have no text wrap applied by default. When you want text to wrap around an object, you apply text wrapping to the object, not the text. So in order to get text to wrap around my octagon, I need to select the octagon and choose one of the four remaining options on the text wrap panel. Let's take a look at what each one does. To do this, I'm going to place my octagon within one frame, one column. The first option will wrap the text around the frame edge or the bounding box of the shape. So even though my shape is an octagon, the bounding box is always a rectangle or a square. If I were to move this graphic around the design, text would always wrap around the square shape of the bounding box. The second option wraps the text around your shape. So if I were to move my graphic frame around the design, you can see that now it will snap to the edge of the octagon. If this was a circle or a triangle or a star shape, it would attempt to wrap to that shape. Depending on where you place this within the design, you might end up with weird gaps and spaces because the area that's left is too small to include text. That does not mean that InDesign is not still trying to wrap around the shape of the object. It just means that it can't get into those small areas. If that happens, move your design element somewhere else on the workspace to see the true purpose of the text wrap setting you have selected. The third option needs to be within a column um, and it is a break text wrap. When you do this, it jumps the text from the top of the shape to the bottom of the shape within a column. If this shape spans multiple columns, it will create that jump text wrap on multiple columns. So usually we only use this within a single column. And we do that so that we don't get awkward little bits of text on one side or the other of a shape. The last option is the same as a jump text wrap, but it will jump to the next column. So anything below the graphic will automatically be pushed away and forced up to the next column. This is used a lot when your graphic is towards the end of your column. In this example, I have the first jump break selected. And if I get close to the bottom, I might end up only having maybe one line of text below my image. But I don't want that. It looks awkward. It's a little uncomfortable. So instead of choosing the jump object, you can select the jump next column text wrap setting. And no matter where I place this graphic in the first column, it will never have text below. And so I can make it pretty close to the bottom um, and not have to worry about having one line of text below the image. We can repeat this for any other objects. We can grab this graphic frame and choose one of the text wrap options. When you have a square or a rectangle, option two and three, so option one is no text wrap, option two is to wrap around the bounding box, and option three is to wrap around the shape of the object. When you have a rectangle or a square, Options two and three appear to do the same exact thing because the bounding box of a rectangle or square is the rectangle or square itself.